Roman Hack Day has arrived. And today I'd like to share two different types of instant ramen hacks. One is a super easy, very popular on the Japanese internet style, and the other one is a bit more complex, but still using instant ramen. I'm excited to be sponsored by Rakuten for this ramen hack video. And for those of you that don't know, Rakuten is a massive online shop offering a wider selection of Japanese products than any other sites. It's a super popular site in Japan, especially because it has frequent sales and deals and you earn points that can be used as money as you shop. And although this is a sponsored video, I was given free reign as to what I'd like to film. So I went ahead and ordered a whole bunch of specialty instant ramens from a Hokkaido shop on Rakuten. Now, if I'm gonna make a ramen hop video, I should probably get some adorable new chopsticks to go with it. And if I'm gonna be cooking ramen and I spill something upon myself, I should probably get an amazing locally made Japanese apron. This apron was made in Aichi by craftsmen using a traditional loom. Ooh. This is amazing! <laughs> I added in some critical ramen gear, like a very big pot and a specialty ramen shaker so that I can look super cool and go mm, as I shake my rum. Looks like this, I think, right? Maybe it's two-handed. I'm not sure. Yeah! I also got this really cute noiseless ramen timer that uses LED lights to notify you when your ramen is ready and a soft egg boiler device thingy that gives you the perfect egg. Not the actual name of it. Hi, buy our soft egg boil rice thingy. I'm sure it has a very clever name. If you check my YouTube info box, I've included links to all the cute chopsticks and the aprons, the ramen accessories, and the Hokkaido ramen that I bought so that if you'd like to pick it up on Rakuten, you can grab them too. And now that Rakuten ships overseas, you too can get products that are impossible to get in your hometown shipped to your doorstep. But more on that later. Let's get started on the first hack. Why am I doing this with my hands like Sailor Moon? Apronation complete. This first ramen hack is incredibly popular from the Japanese interwebs. I think it has trickled over to things like Instagram and TikTok by now, but it is mayonnaise and egg coming together to form something majestic. Even though it's really simple, it completely changes the taste of your ramen. Now, because I'm using a specialty ramen from Hokkaido, mine comes with something that's a bit different than the stuff you might have. I have a liquid salt. You wanna hear that a little closer? Oh yeah. What are you watching? I'm telling your mom. This is liquid seasoning because this is kind of like a more high quality ramen, which is why I recommend you definitely go buy some. If you're trying this at home, you might be using a powdered packet and that's totally fine. This is just gonna make mine extra magical and yours, it will take it from being like a basic ramen to like a much less basic. I don't know what the opposite of basic is. Please let me know in the comment section below. You're basic. No, I'm not. I'm not basic. What? Now, one thing I want you to note is the amazing quality of these noodles. Because these noodles are made from pretty much like a ramen shop where they dry them and then package them up, they are much better quality than the kind you get that are kind of instant and fried. But that's okay, you work with what you got. This is my shoyu. I'm gonna be dumping this into my bowl with little to no ceremony. Now is the time to appreciate my cat scissors. into the bowl. Nice room temperature egg. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a whiskey whisk and then I'm gonna dump it in with little to no ceremony. Tiny whisk appreciation, everyone. Love a good tiny thing. Next up, a tablespoon to two tablespoons 
of Kewpie mayonnaise. Now, I know people in Japan or people who have visited Japan are always going on and on and on about Kewpie mayonnaise, but it really does taste different than mayonnaise in North America. If you're using Miracle Whip, I mean, go for it, but it might be a little more zingier, tangier, maybe more vinegary. Kewpie mayonnaise is super creamy egg-based mayo, and so it's basically like adding milk or something creamier to your ramen. Oh yeah, one nice big tablespoon going in. How do the professionals do it? Everything just falls in so perfectly for them. I need a tiny miniature spatula to scrape out the mayo. Sorry, mayo. You're coming with me. Hiya. Yeah. And last but not least, we're going to add in some garlic. You can take a clove of garlic and just kind of shred it if you have a microplane. You can chop it up really, really fine, or you can even use that pre-chopped garlic that comes out of a container. You're gonna pop that on in. This one's uh, on my Sailor Moon, my Sailor Moon plate. I'm not sure you're supposed to use it to put garlic on, but, but I have. Oh yeah, <sighs> amazing. All right, and that is about it for the sauce base. Now, I like to level up my ramen by adding a little more, so I would like to do a soft boiled egg. As well, I'm going to be using some uh, moyashi, which is this bean sprout. It adds that kind of like little crunchiness to it. And I'm gonna be adding a sprinkling of green onions near the end. This is optional. And there's one more thing that's optional. This is me going off the original recipe. If you like things a little spicy, I'm going to add in a little bit of gochujang. This is like half a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon of gochujang. You could use sriracha or any other hot sauce that you like, but uh, I think having a little bit of spice in your life is okay. Ramen of the world. Spice up your life. Does anyone know this anymore? Spice up your life. Ah, if you know what I'm singing, let me know in the comment section. Now using this uh, nifty egg timer, I'm gonna pop over to the kitchen to make a perfect soft boiled egg. The way that it works is you just put it into the pot and then it goes darker according to the time that you want. So hopefully this is gonna work and you're not gonna embarrass me in front of my friends. To the kitchen. After cooling the egg, I have peeled it. It feels uh, nice and soft, but we will do the final egg reveal once the ramen is ready to go. So I'm just gonna put them over here for now. No face, you keep an eye on that egg. Do not eat it. And uh, let's get started with cooking our ramen. For the easy hack, I'm just gonna be using my burner and my little tiny pot because we're gonna be using all the water. But for my leveled up hack, we're gonna be using the ramen pot and the ramen shaker. I can't wait. We're just gonna bring the water to a boil. I added the amount of water as instructed on the back of the package. It was about two cups of water. And then once it's boiled, we're gonna be adding in the moyashi, the bean sprouts, to cook it with the ramen noodles. I like to do everything at the same time rather than having to have like separate pots everywhere. Now to, to watch and wait. You're not supposed to do that, are you? They won't boil, right? Look away, Martina, look away. And now the power of editing. All right, we've come to a boil. I'm gonna toss in my noodles. Shing. And I'm gonna set my ramen timer. You simply press the middle here once. You can see the light is flashing. That means that it's on. When it hits the three minute mark, the first little LED is gonna light up up top. And when it hits the four minute mark, it's gonna hit up in the center here. Once it hits three minutes, I'm gonna pop in my moyashi so that they cook for the last final minute. I also forgot to mention, it has a magnet on the back. That's why it's just been magically sticking to this. So you're supposed to be able to like, you know, put it onto the top of your oven or on your fridge. Ding. You tried to overflow, but I stopped you the worst when you walk away and you just hear from your kitchen. You're like, no, it's happened everyone. All right, Moyashi going in. It's 
stop acting insane, Ramen. Calm yourself. Oh yeah, she tell them. Wah! <laughs> nice try. You thought I wasn't paying attention because of the colorful lights distracting me, but I was totally paying attention. All right, we've hit the four minute mark. I'm killing the heat. I'm just gonna double click it and it's off. Thank you, adorable ramen timer. Next step, we're gonna take a little bit of the hot water and add it to the eggs to cook it. We're looking to add about a cup or so. Scalding hot water, going in. Give it a nice mix. If you want the broth to taste a little bit um, saltier or stronger, you can just taste it as you go. Nice. Look at these beautiful eggy noodles. They are awesome. You can tell it's different than a normal instant ramen pack, right? Look at that. So much. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little swirl to get all those flavors around. And we'll see if I can do it on camera. If you wanna get that nice fold, you kind of grab as much as you can and you give it a bit of a shake and then you kind of lay it back down again. And that's how you get that little like ramen fold you see at the restaurants. We're not done yet. Green onions going in. No one saw that. And the moment we've been waiting for, has the egg timer made a perfect egg? Gooey magic, it is parfait. Look at that. Look at that jammy perfect egg. Ooh, yeah. And because I'm gonna be sassy, little pinch of tested, of tested sesame deeds, of toasted sesame seeds. Just a little sprinkle. That looks amazing. Now for some sexy food porn shots. It's Takimas. All right, I got my adorable new bunny chopsticks. I love it. I love that they're bunnies. They're so freaking cute. They have tiny bow ties, you guys. I'm gonna try the broth first. You can see the color has changed, right? It's gone from that really dark brown. Ooh, mm, it's so creamy. It's almost like adding a soy milk or milk to your ramen, which sounds counterintuitive, I know, but if you recall many years ago, the suggestion of putting a slice of processed cheese not real cheese, but processed cheese into your Shin Ramen makes it so much better. And some of you didn't believe me, and some of you did. And now ramen hacks are just like a normal thing that everyone does. This mayo egg combo is so good. The gochujang, just a tiniest bit of spicy heat I can taste in it. Not too much. I think I could probably go for maybe a half teaspoon more, but I don't wanna like overdo it and kind of drown out the taste of everything else. Let's give the noodles a shot. Mmm. You get the scrunchy crunchiness from the moyashi. Noodles are eggy, delicious, still firm. One of the biggest difference between getting like a gourmet type instant ramen and between one from like a conveni, the noodles just last a lot longer. They don't bloat as fast. You know when like you don't eat your cup ramen fast enough and it just becomes like marshmallow ramen? This can really hold up because from when uh, I made this and from when I ate this, you know I got a bunch of sexy food porn shots. So. Time went by and still they're good. We're gonna give this egg a go. <laughs> Look at the color of this egg, it's beautiful. Mmm. Damn, that timer really worked. The egg is not rubbery. It's not like a rubbery white and then like a liquidy inside. It's super soft, but it's completely cooked. It's just got that slightly magical goo that you want when you have a ramen egg. This would be really good for making a whole batch of soft boiled eggs and then soaking them in like the shoyu sauce that you need to do to make an actual like ramen egg. But man, 
That is fantastic. Well, I'm gonna finish this ramen and then we're gonna go to the next level. We're going to make a Tantan Men ramen from Instant Ramen. I know it's crazy, but it is freaking delicious. On to the level up next ramen. What? All right, time for a ramen hack pro level. Now, why is this pro level? We're gonna be including things like meat that we're cooking and adding inside of it. We're gonna be changing the taste altogether with like a very peanutty sesame flavored broth. We're trying to recreate basically tantan men. I've had a couple of tantan mens, I think before in my Tokyo Tours videos. So you might've actually seen me eat this. So this is like taking normal instant ramen and bringing it up to that level. So the ramen I'm using for this one is still from Hokkaido, and this is a miso sesame ramen. So I'm already kind of on the path of heading towards a dantan flavor. If you don't have this available for you, then you want to stick for something that might be like miso or slightly plain flavored. If you go for something that's like tonkotsu, like a creamy meat flavor one, it's not gonna work out. You might be able to get away with something spicy, but I really think a miso ramen is probably the best to go with. Now in the controversial world, when it comes to making dantan men, I should, how dare you? It's filming. I'm using peanut butter instead of like a sesame or a tahini paste. Some people in Japan will use this like goma dressing that you use for salad. I think that's kind of a neat hack. It's like a salad dressing that's become a ramen sauce. If you have it, I mean, give it a go. And if you want to try it, you can probably get this on Rakuten. However, I'm going to be sticking with the peanut butter family simply because I think it's accessible for many different people around the world. Personally, I am a crunchy peanut butter girl, not so into smooth. Smooth peanut butter can remain in the cooking pantry. Uh, please let me know in the comment section if you are a smooth or crunchy kind of person. Because it better be crunchy. Along with GIF, not JIF, GIF. There is one other critical ingredient you will need here, and this is doubanjang. Doubanjang is a spicy fermented chili paste broad bean thingamabob that's very popular in Sichuan. I've not been to China enough to know all these details about um, what goes into it, but it's a schmassy. People use it for things like mapo tofu. We're gonna be using it to make our tantan men have that spicy kick. It is way spicier than gochujang in my humble opinion. So uh, be careful. And if you can't find it, you can definitely get this on Rakuten as well. All right, first step, we're gonna make the soup stock. Then we're going to make the meat topping. And last, we're gonna cook our ramen noodles and then assemble everything together. Ramen hack level up, let's go. With your adorable cat scissors, open up your sauce packet or powder pack and pop that on into the bowl. Ooh, this one's got a little nice layer of glistening fat. Always tasty, not being sarcastic with this. Smooth peanut butter going in. You'll notice this time around, I have adorable little tiny plates that I prepared for myself. I didn't even have an assistant to do it, so it was just like doing double the work anyways. Miso paste is going in. I'm using a light white to medium kind of like brown one. I'm not using a dark, dark, dark one because that will be too salty for this. We're doing half a tablespoon of ground sesame. If you're a sesame kind of gal or guy, uh, you can add much more. I love the taste of sesame and I love ground sesame, so I went for it. Remember this? This is from my Japanese cooking video, Surabachi and the Surakogi. We are doing half a tablespoon of sesame oil. and half a teaspoon of rice vinegar. Now, I'm using sushi vinegar, which is a bit different. Rice vinegar is just vinegar. Sushi vinegar has a little bit of like mirin and a little bit of flavoring in it. I personally prefer the way that this tastes. I tried it with rice vinegar. It was totally fine. It was just a little bit on like the kind of tart side. Sushi vinegar, rice vinegar, if you have normal vinegar, go for it. It's not gonna be a massive difference because there are so many other strong flavors. And now we're gonna start just mixing all this up. This is for all the Yasmer fans out there. I mean, I guess it sounds okay. That's how you're supposed to do it, right? Intensely stare at the camera while you make sounds. Thank <laughs> you. 
In the end, you should have this uh, lovely thick paste and you're going to be adding hot water that's used to boil the ramen noodles in to actually like make this thin. So don't worry if it's super thick right now. Also, I tried this out in an instant cup noodle. I was like, I wonder if it would work. And I kind of spread it over the surface of the cup noodle before adding the hot water and pushing it down. And it totally worked. We're gonna move on to the meat section now. On to the spicy meat toppings. If you don't eat meat, then you can switch this out for, you know, like a tofu. Just make sure you're doing something that's mince, minced chicken, minced beef, whatever you want, but pork is the traditional way you do it. You're going with like 60 grams of minced pork, which is kind of just like a quarter cup of pork. It's a very small amount. I'm not adding any oil to this pan because the pork is fatty enough and I'll actually have to drain off some of this pork fat because it's just, uh, it's too much. I think it gets too, too greasy. We're gonna cook the pork on medium to medium high. We want it to be like a little bit on the crispy side. And once this turns to like a brown color, we're gonna start adding in ginger, garlic, green onions, and a bit of sesame oil. And at the very end, we'll add in our spicy sauce. It will be a spicy. So you can see what I mean, this is so, this is so oily. What I do is I just kind of push it off to one side and I kind of force the oil down into one corner and then I just scoop a little bit out into a container that will not break under heat. So I have a ceramic container here and got my spoon. Look at how much oil I got off this tiny amount of pork. No thanks. Okay, the pork is starting to look nice and crispy. We're going to be adding in a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half of grated garlic. And we're going to be adding in a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of a ginger. I am using ginger paste, which makes life a heck of a lot easier, but you can just grate ginger fresh if you want. It's popping, it's snapping, it's going everywhere like popcorn. My God, who knew ginger was so violent? The real killer in the world, ginger. And last up, we're gonna add about a teaspoon of green onion. I'm gonna be saving the other teaspoon for a garnish on top. Now we're adding in the dobujang. I'm going for about a tablespoon, which might be too much for you if you're not into spicy food. Start with like half a tablespoon and then add up more if you need some more later. We're gonna finish this off with a teaspoon of sesame oil, just like a little bit, just for the flavors. And you can kill the heat. And we're going to transfer this to a bowl. We will be assembling this later. I'm just so hot now. The sauce is done, toppings are done. All we need now is to boil the ramen in my excellent ramen pot and use my shaky shaky, which I can't wait to do. To the kitchen! To the other kitchen! My, my normal, to the, to the kitchen! Look at my apron. Yes, it's glorious. So the water is nice and boiled and ready to go. And what I love about a ramen strainer that I've always wanted to have is you put it straight in. Like in the ramen shops, they just live in there. And that way you can do multiple ramen in the same hot water and not waste so much water all the time. We're dumping this in, setting our little ramen timer to four minutes, and we're gonna cook the bok choy in the same water. I called it bok choy. Well, anyways, bok choy, not an English word to begin with. So I guess no matter what I say, it's never gonna really be right. Ramen timer, a go. I feel like a real ramen chef with my apron and my little ramen basket, my ramen timer. The only flaw in my plan is that I'm making instant ramen. But still, I'm getting close. 
One day I think I'm gonna make a, like ramen broth from scratch using my Instant Pot. So, so I'm almost there, halfway there. A little trick I like to do, you take your bok choy leaf and then you cut three slits into the bottom so it's still attached when you cook it and then you lay it down inside of the bowl of ramen. It looks a lot prettier and it's easier to eat because like when you bite into it, it kind of slides off in a slice. That's my little bok choy trip. That's my own little, I still can't say it, bok choy. Is this one of those words again like put in where I can't ever say it? Bok choy. Bok choy. Bok choy hack. Three minutes. Bok choy is going in. What I've always dreamed of now to come true. Okay, you ready? It's been my dream. It's simple, but I want to do. It's simple, but I wanted to. Okay, I'm gonna take out the bok choy and add it to the ramen, and we're gonna take this over to our little mixing station to mix this all together. And before I go, I'm gonna scoop out about two cups of hot water. Hot water time. I'm gonna use the starchy green water from cooking bok choy and noodles and add about half a cup in just to start like loosening this paste up. Let's -a go. A lot of this is up to you, right? Like how you wanna flavor it. Oh yeah. Yum. Switching to the mini whisk. Taste test. Yum. Next up, we're gonna add in the noodles. Some people do a dry dantan men, but we are gonna go for the delicious soupy variety today. Oh yes. These noodles also look like a fantastic egg noodle. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. It's one of those things where you just don't think things like sesame and peanut butter and like noodles go together and then you realize how wrong you are when you try it for the first time. Adding in your spicy dobujan pork. You can put that off to the side like that. Oh yeah, what a meal. I'm gonna lay in my bok choy. Very, very nice. Final green onions going in. Top like that. And we're gonna finish it all off with some more sesame seeds because I don't think there's enough in here already. Not required, but I think this is a nice finishing touch. Spice some chili oil just to let anyone know that this is indeed dangerously. Oh yeah! It's time for some sexy food porn shots. I decided to use my bear chopsticks this time because I've got meat and uh, bears eat meat, right? Totally makes sense. It's takimas. Oh, the smell is so good, you guys. It's really, really like thick. Mmm. Honestly, you can't really tell if there's peanut butter in here. The sesame and the miso go hand in hand so perfectly. Mmm. The spiciness of the meat seems spicy on its own, but when you eat it mixed in, it's not that bad. Although I know you guys don't trust me on spice anymore. I've <laughs> seen the comments. <laughs> I'm just gonna a bit of bok choy. Yum. Mmm. Still crunchy, just what I like. I'm gonna try a little bit of meat pieces on their own. Mmm. Gingery, garlicky. And it's got that kick from the dubujang paste. Wow. If you've never tried like a peanut buttery sesame noodle before or a dantan men, I really recommend giving it a shot. 
please let me know in the comment section if you end up trying any of these ramen hacks at home. Now, if you don't mind me, I'm gonna keep eating before these noodles get destroyed. So if you'd like to get your hands on some hard to get Japanese overseas ramen or other ramen accessories, now you can. Rakuten now has an overseas shipping service called Rakuten Global Express. You can purchase items on Rakuten and also on other Japanese websites. You can download the Google Translate app for your web browser and click it to help you translate the shops. Basically, Rakuten Global Express will combine all the items you've purchased at a warehouse in Japan and then ship it in one go. That means you're not paying for a million little boxes. Just make sure you don't buy any like raw meat or medical things that can't be shipped over to your country. I had done a video before with Rakuten and it was really cool that you guys sent me some tweets and some messages showing me what you ended up buying on Rakuten. So if you end up buying anything this time around or you get the same ramen as me or like my really cute ramen apron, please send me a message. It was really fun to see what everyone's getting. Links to all the items I purchased on Rakuten are in my YouTube info box. And thank you again to Rakuten for sponsoring this video and for fueling my ramen addiction. But it, like, it's not an addiction because like I could stop whenever I wanted to. It's just that I don't really want to. And it's like, it's like I could, but you know, I mean, why would I? I mean, there's just so much ramen in Japan. So, but like I could if I wanted to.